of y'all, um, it's almost seven, and I see the sun coming a little bit up over the hill, but um, I'm a little anxious to get on the road today. Um, I'm in a race uh, with all these RVs in the parking lot to get to the next Walmart. Um, as you get farther west, you get less and less options. And there are two rest areas, one close by. I might pick it and do the Walmart tomorrow. Uh, but I haven't decided yet. Um, so when I woke up this morning and I came to my place to be with Yahweh, um, a lot of times what I will do is I just start writing um, to kind of get all of the whatever I've been thinking, just get it out of me. And then sometimes the, the Ruach, the Ruach Hakadesh, he takes over. And um, that's what happened this morning. And I've reread it because I always do that. I write, I, it's like <sighs> when I finish. And then I go back and I'm like, you know, there's there's probably a lot, a lot of my brothers and sisters out there that need to hear this. And I want you to understand it's it's not written against anybody. It's written for me because the struggle is in me. And I just want you to see how how I deal with it and if it helps you if it helps you along the path maybe a thought that or an idea or that encourages you because it's a hard path it's a hard path and um, and we're on it it's narrow and we can walk together for a while, but we can only get through the gate one at a time. <laughs> it's narrow. So, um, please, if there's anybody listening, understand my heart when I write these words. Father, this thing with my friend is weighing heavy on me. I feel it is mockery directed at me. I suppose my life has always made them feel, uh, at least I'm not Betty. I, I know they say one thing, but they, like so many others, do measure sin. And though they believe you can be forgiven, your destruction, your sin, your fall should never be forgotten. My cousin said to me years ago, your daughters will never forgive you for ruining their little house on the prairie life. And this I know about most people. The reason they hold your sin up is to hide theirs. They simply do not know how to accept that Yeshua's love and great sacrifice was truly enough. I remember when my grandson Luke said, but he didn't take away my sin. I still sin. Oh, Abba, help him. Let him believe that Yeshua took his sin, nailed it to the cross, and in forgiving him of his sin, he removed the burden of guilt. It is the guilt over one's own sin that lashes out and says, but, <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, sorry, it's dry air here. I'm having a harder time, I'm, ad I'm adjusting. But what about your sin? They are simply trying to do away with guilt. 
if your sin is louder than theirs, then they feel better. I've done it. But Yeshua has taught me a better way. That when I truly repent, when I confess the deepest, darkest, most secret sins, He's promised. And I believe that I'm forgiven. And if He forgives me, I do not have to carry around a bag full of guilt over the cement, the sins I committed yesterday. I have heard of a teaching that every time you sin today, it's as though you add to or you even crucify Yeshua again. What a horrible teaching. When Yeshua took our sin, he took it all, for all time. Living without guilt is a gift of gratitude expressed in its highest form. That his sacrifice was enough. It was complete. Me, walking around in sackcloth and ashes, does nothing to relieve the pain he suffered. And no sin I do today would add to it. He already knew. He knew the times I would miss the mark when he laid down to accept the punishment for me. The miracle of his great and amazing gift is that today, I can live like I'm loved. That I don't have to wound other beings in my attempt to justify myself. There's the story of the woman who sinned much. So she was able to love much because she understood the great gift of redemption. I am that woman. I was not created to be a whore, but I was. I was not created to be a murderer, but I did. I was not created to worship other gods or seek peace in pharmacia, but I have, and I did. I was created for one purpose, to glorify Yahweh and make him known to a lost and dying world. Carrying around a bag of guilt and regret of all the ways I failed at this life, it does nothing. It does nothing to honor the glorious gift of Yeshua's life, death, and resurrection. It is when I walk brave and bold and sure of his great love for me, that he is honored. One of the strong weapons of the enemy is to continually remind a person of all the wrong decisions and times they messed up or gave in. If he can keep you burdened by trying to make up for yesterday, you will never truly have high life today. A life that glorifies the Elohim means that the enemy is failing. And if our purpose is to glorify Yahweh, the enemy's purpose is to make sure we don't. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Abba, create in me a clean heart. Let your wisdom and love fill the gaping wounds left by sin's dread sway. Today, O oh Yahweh, let me walk in your light. Let me rejoice in the eternal salvation of the way. O oh Yeshua, my heart, my heart longs for you. Thank you for the greatest gift ever given. Give me courage to fully receive it. And for those who come to seek your face, oh Abba, 
Pour out your Ruach Hakadash. Let us all walk in your light. And today, dear shepherd, let us live like we're loved. Oh, Yahweh. Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh a God. Amen.